what's good what's good youtube american rx at it again uh what's what's up what's going on what's new uh special shout out to my subscribers to the viewers um to the, the west indians the indians the original americans you know what i'm saying um by blood ear ear to the americas um shout out to you all and i'm saying um wild indians and i'm saying people who want to be free what's good uh, uh in this presentation i'll be discussing uh letters rogatory uh, i've used one before in a situation uh they were very impressed with it but uh uh they were very impressed so uh let me see now so for indians speaking for indians you know if you are in a situation as you haven't caused harm to anyone as i haven't damaged people's property um, you know, as long as you do, you haven't done broke broken the ecclesiastic code, the laws, the Ten Commandments. You know what I'm saying? Um, if it's if it's if it's a commercial matter, meaning commercial crime, as in uh, colorable co colorable offenses, and here. There's not, there's not a contract, or they're forcing a contract upon you, or they, ass, they, they, they assume, or they presume that you were aware of the terms and the conditions of the contract that you, that wasn't disclosed to you. Um, well, this is a, this should be an effective way of, you know, remedying whatever situations you may be in. Um, if you wanna. If you want to like a sample of what I've created, um, a letters rogatory. Now, since what it really is, it's since these courts are foreign to you in any ways, because they're all foreign to you, because they are foreign uh, jurisdictions set up on the land, because you're under military occupation. Um, unfortunately, you're under occupation by the mil military, colonial military, crown military. Vatican military, you're under occupation. Um, this is how you gotta communicate, right? Through this letter is regulatory. Because since they they have no jurisdiction because of uh, they're foreign to you, you need not to be in their courts. As the body, you need not to step in their courts, those kangaroo courts. All you gotta do is, because they're inviting you and you could always refuse the invitation, okay? But you could communicate um, in honor, you know what I'm saying? In a honorable ma manner, non-belligerent, but honorably. So this is one of the methods you could use, okay? All right, so let's get to it. Letters rogatory are the customary method of obtaining assistance from abroad in the absence of a treaty or executive agreement. Okay, so for all the non-politically affiliated Indians that didn't sign a treaty, and you have in, you having issues to seek remedy in these courts. This is the perfect tool to use for you, okay? For all the Indians that didn't sign any of these treaties, these make deals with the break deals with these um foreign people, and that that honor that honors nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a, your way, our method of making a, that that agreement, okay? Or calling out the bullshit, okay? A letter regulatory is a request from a judge in the United States to the judiciary of the foreign country, right? So you are your, you are your, the judge of your court, okay? The court is just the four corners of the, the paper, okay? That's your court, and you are the judge on that document, okay? Whatever you present is a motion to, in the, in, in, you know, in your court, right? Because remember, you're in admiralty jurisdiction, so you need, you need to have your court when dealing with these admiralty issues, your court must be on the land, okay? 
stationary, not moving. Stay on the land. Don't go, don't go off in the waters and get lost. Okay. Uh, so right here it says United States to the judiciary of a foreign country. So basically, if you replace where you see United States with your court, meaning the United States itself, which is foreign to you, as you and the original here of the here of this land, right? United States to the judiciary of a country, a foreign country requesting the performance of an act which if done without the sanction of the foreign court would constitute a violation of that country's sovereignty all right so within your court within your tribal court within your within your clan court right this is why you have to establish your house or your clan for the record or you know put up put notice put it make it note give notice out that you have established your house using your, your own seal you know what I'm saying your own marks you know what I'm saying could be whatever mark you choose doesn't necessarily have to be a seals per se but something an impression right something you know of that you know nature prosecutor should assume that the process will take or oh, take a year or more letters regulatory are customarily transmitted via the diplomatic channel so when you're doing these letters you're, you're act actually approaching it from a di diplomatic standpoint all right a time consuming means of transmission um the time involved may be shortened by transmitting a copy of the request through interpol or through some other more direct route but even in urgent cases the request may take over a month to execute okay so the letters regulatory that i i i have i worked on you know modified a little bit um it is for uh pretty much any case okay it could work and i suggest when you're using it if you do choose to use it right if you want a copy of it i could you know you could email send an email and i'll just you know share it with you guys you know you want to donate you could donate you know what i'm saying but you know as it, as i said i'm not for profit not for gain i just share information but if you want to donate in order to help with you know the office or office then you could do so okay be feel free to do so okay um the form of a letter regulatory depends on the country to which it is addressed and the assistance sought some co countries have statutory guidelines for granting assistance assistant the united states attorney should seek specific guidance from the office of international affairs oia before drafting a letter regulatory letter letters regulatory generally include background who is investigating whom and for what charge the facts enough you know, information about the case for the foreign judge to conclude that a crime has been committed and to see the relevance of the evidence that is being sought uh, assistance requested be specific but include the elastic clause to allow subsequent expansion of the request without filing an additional letter regulatory the text of the statutes alleged to have been violated so when they when they're using that you're transmitting utility which is your ends legis to summons that they summons that name and they're trying to get you the body to appear by by using that name through deceptive me means that's your estate okay that's not you per se as a man or the woman that's your estate so when you're addressing these matters you address it from a third party from a third person kind of you know uh, uh on the behalf of okay and you send this through the mail uh certified or registered mail restricted uh delivery to the judge okay send these along with the w9 okay um if you have a, a fictitious name uh certificate and uh pretty much that's it you know what i'm saying w9 fictitious name certificate and the letters regulatory 
because you want to know who you're doing business with or who's want, who wants to do conduct business with you and also your fee schedule. You should send your fee schedule, okay? Um, the text of the statutes alleged to have been violated and promised of reciprocity. Letters regulatory must be signed by a judge and normally authenticated by an apostle. Okay? So that's a method you could use as well. But you could authenticate your own documents because since you have your own seal, that's a form of authentication, okay? But if you want to go ahead and get it apostle with the, with the, with the um, Secretary of State, that, that would be a good idea. All right? Because if you have your seal on it, plus you get it apostle, that'd be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a foreign jurisdiction, all right? And they know they could see the document uh, and, 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 and they would have to honor it, okay? To use an apostle, the chain certification is cumbersome process involving authenticating by the Department of Justice. This the ascertain which method to use because authentication requirements change frequently. Okay. Second, prepare a draft, right, and send it to OIA for clearance. Third, secure a judge signature because you are the judge. Okay, you are the judge on your documents in your court. You are the judge. You're the you're the chief justice in your tribal court. Okay, you call the shots. You authenticate. Okay, under your seal, under, under your um pen. Okay, under your deed, under your seal. All right. Third, secure secure a judge's signature. Submit the clear final to the court, district court in two originals under cover of an of an application for issuance of letters, regulatory, and a memorandum in support, models of which have been obtained from OIA. One signed original letter, regulatory, remains with the court. Okay? Court authentic authenticate as directed by OIA unless OIA is instructed, has instructed you differently. But this is this is for their procedures, right? For them, for the United States trustees, okay? Fifth, make arrangement of translation of the letter regulatory, not the application or supporting memorandum, and send a duplicate original with a translation of OIA, which will transmit it to the Department of State, the American Embassy in the con country concerned, or directly to appropriate ministry or authority in the country concerned, okay? so. Since you are foreign to these courts, because you are an Indian, you're tribal, right? You maintain your, 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 you maintain your cultural connection to your tribe, right? You have a severe ties, your cultural ties from your, from your tribal community. You still maintain the customs, right? You have the power to do all of this, right? From a, that's from a foreign court, because your tribal court is foreign to this United States, okay? Um, which were transmitted to the Department of State, American Embassy in the con country concerned, or directly appropriate ministry or authority in the country concerned. If OIA transmits the letter regulatory with translation via the diplomatic channel, the embassy will send it to the foreign ministry under, co under cover of the diplomatic note. The foreign ministry will usually refer, refer it to the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Justice will usually forward it to the proper judicial authority where it will be executed. Normally, the evidence once obtained is returned through the same channel by, the, by which the request was transmitted. So, in this letter, letter regulatory, since everything is commercial, since all these courts are bank, this letter regulatory will um, assign the judge as a fiduciary trustee, right? So he could settle the case for closure and um, uh, balance the books, okay? Because it's all banking. That's all it is. It's just credits on account, right? It's all about banking. Zero the books, all right? This is a charge. The ones who the one who brings the charge must have remedy, all right? So this is another breakdown of letters regulatory. Uh, 22 CFR section 9254, letters regulatory defined. It in its broader sense. In international practice, the term letters regulatory denotes a formal request from a court in which an action is pending 
to a foreign court to perform some judicial act. Examples are requests for taking of evidence.